busy. We're going to Amoeba. We're gonna go to San Francisco and go do Amoeba and chill. Do you want to do that? Yeah? Let's go find your brother. Jesse! Jesse! Where are you? Jesse? No, he's not there. Jesse! Is that here? Nope. Where the fuck is he? Jess, where are you? Jess! 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 Where'd you go? How the hell did you get in there? Are you freaking weirdo? Oh my god. people and puppies. We have two doggos and we have returning for another episode, Angela, and we have a new person, Lauren, back there. And we went to Amoeba with these guys, Rizzy and Jesse, and we all left with some good stuff here. So, um, I think you should start because you have a lot more. <laughs> First, um, I got this for my boyfriend because I lost his copy that we own. It's um, To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Absolutely love this one. It's so funky, it's so political. Oh yeah, I do that. Very political. I love that like a bunch of the tracks are more like slam poetry. I think that he has a lot to say. And he says a lot of it on this album. Also, I just love the funk. I love the funk. I love that he's like trying to bring it back. That's like a huge thing that like hasn't been represented in modern day hip hop and he's really trying to do it. <laughs> so I really like that. Shit don't change it till you get up and wash your ass, nigga. Shit don't change it till you get up and wash your ass. I got Tina Connor's album. Oh it's God. the one that um, has nothing compares to you on it, which is like yeah. the most popular Classic song, song, even if it is a Prince cover. But yeah, <laughs> um, I just really love Tina Connor, and she's totally like punk Irish princess, you know? <laughs> And um, I think she's really cool. Also has a shaved head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I haven't like listened to much of her other actual music. I've only listened to Nothing Compares to You. Oops. But now I get to listen to all of it. So I'm super excited. Where did I go wrong? My first selection is a band called Angels of Light, and I say it's a band, I'm pretty sure it's just one dude. It's the guy from the band Swans, Michael Jira. Swans is just this super weird no-wave band that has done stuff from like early metal to electronic music. They're just really, really weird. So this group, on the other hand, he decided to do a really dark alternative country sound. I've been meaning to listen to them because I am kind of a sucker for alternative country, so I finally decided to grab the very first album and I'm excited to hear what's on it. final years, <laughs> original remixes and rarities. I wanted to get something that was his. I'm actually recently into Jay Dilla. My boyfriend showed him to me. Always on that um, underground hip hop hype. He's classic. <laughs> yeah. I hear him. <laughs> what, what do they call him? The King of Beats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you heard Donuts? Yeah. Of okay. Course. Yeah. That's a that's a hip hop record. I think everybody needs to hear. Yeah. It. Even if they're not a hip hop fan, it's Jeff. You have to see listen to Jay Dilla. So I'm excited to listen to this like compilation of just like such good things. The state of our relations through translations. That's not the ticket. Breaking codes and hieroglyphics. Trying to get down to get specifics. I got Tears for Fears, probably most sold album. It is what? 
and it has stuff like Shout and Mother's Talk and um, Head Over Heels. And personally, like these are just like my favorite like 80s ballads. Like I fucking love these songs. And um, anyways, yeah, I just love Tears for Fears. I have um, a cassette from them, but not a CD yet. Um, so I'm excited to listen to this one too. Is Mad World on that one? No. No? No. <laughs> it's so funny because like that song Gary Jules does for Donnie Darko, everybody forgets that that's actually a Tears, it's a Tears for Fears song. Yeah. yeah, and it's really upbeat and funny, so. Yeah, no, um, like I like how Tears for Fears can make you feel like totally sad but really upbeat at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm psyched. So good. This is a band, I've seen their name everywhere, and I've actually never heard anything by them. This is a Camper Van Beethoven, or Camper Van Beethoven, I have no idea how to pronounce the name, but this is their album, Key Lime Pie, another alternative country album. I was looking into their stuff, and I saw that these guys were categorized as alternative country. I think specifically on this record, they their early stuff, what I've read, they did a little bit of ska influence stuff. But this one strayed away from it and took an alternative country approach. So, like I said, I'm a sucker for alt country and I need to hear it. And so I figured this would be a good opportunity for me to check these guys out. And if I like them, I'll probably get more of their stuff. Next one I grabbed from um, Clearance Experimental. Um, I really like experimental music. That's probably like the most of what I listen to from like experimental rock to experimental electronic. Um, I really like those weird beats. <laughs> I've, n I've never heard of it before. It just sounded really neat. There's like a little description on it. It is Lunar Roulette by Psych. I like the sound of that. Yeah, awesome. it looks super cool. The description on here, it says, Lunar Roulette is an astonishing album brimming with ecstatically passionate excursions into outer regions of improvised music. Oh, I know, apparently it's pretty Whoa. jazzy. Whoa. Yeah, we, it sounds really cool. We are absolutely going to listen to that. <laughs> 2 dollars Yeah. Super come up. <laughs> So in the same realm as 80s stuff, I, know. I have the Psychedelic Furs. <laughs> this is their very first album. So I got this album as a recommendation from my girlfriend. I've been playing her a lot of replacement stuff, as evident from previous episodes of the show. I've been listening to the replacements like crazy. They're such a fucking awesome band. And so I played my girlfriend the song Unsatisfied, and she's like, this sounds a lot like the Psychedelic Furs. And I was like, no way. And so she told me about this album, and I got it because I love that song Unsatisfied. And seeing as she says it's similar sounding to stuff on here, I needed to listen to it myself. And also because the Psychedelic Furs are the Psychedelic Furs. They're <laughs> classic, classic stuff. I'm really excited to hear what's on this one. My next one is Prefuse 73 Security Screenings. I had my boyfriend in mind a lot today. Uh, the last time we did Amoeba and Chill in Berkeley, I came back and he was like, you didn't bring me anything. So <laughs> I tried to bring him some stuff this time. This one is for him. Honestly, Prefuse, like I don't need to say anything else. I've never heard anything from him that I didn't like. <laughs> Related as far as the genre is concerned. They're different bands, but they're related in the genre sense. And they're also related because I uh, found out about them through this book called Gimme Indie. 
and it's a it's a compilation of 500 uh, indie records that were super influential. So I had that in mind. So I have here an album by a band called Bardo Pond, and then an album by a band called Bowery Electric. So Bardo Pond, I actually own an album by them. Um, I think it's their latest release, but they are awesome. They're like experimental space rock. The lead guy in this band also plays the flute. So, you know, we have all the spacey sounding stuff and then here he is playing this echoey flute. So it's, it's really awesome. I mean, I love everything I've heard by these guys. So I'm excited to hear this one. And then Bowery Electric, this is another shoegaze band. Um, this is off the Cranky label, and I've talked about Cranky in the last two episodes of Amoeba and Chill, but they've just put out some really killer stuff. And I discovered them through the book. I got their second album because it was a mixture of like trip hop shoegaze, and I've never heard anything <laughs> like that, and it sounded really awesome. This one, on the other hand, is before they took that route. This is just straight up shoegaze, and it's really psyche and all that, so I'm a sucker for shoegaze as I am with alternative country, so I'm excited <laughs> to space out to these guys here. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Next is another one that I don't know anything on. Cafe Solaire, the ninth volume. Is it like house um, music? It's lounge. Oh, lounge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ethno I respect that. Yeah, I love lounge music. Like, I don't know. Some people are like, what is this elevator music? I'm bored. I'm going to go to sleep. Oh, I love, love it. it. It's so good. Like, a lot of them, like, it says ethno moods and deep cool. Like, that's what I want in music. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> My last purchase is in the shoegaze realm again, but instead I picked it up from the metal section. This is a band called Ghost Bath. The name of the band is fucking awesome. The album cover is equally as awesome. Like the band Death Heaven, which basically they took shoegaze and black metal and fused it together, these guys are similar to that. I came across them when I was looking up bands that were similar to Death Heaven because they're an amazing band, and these guys popped up. And like I said, the name of the band itself caught my eye. And also the name of the album is, everything about this is fucking cool. It's it called so cool. Moon Lover. Like you have a band called Ghost Bath Moon Lover with a lady wearing a moon mask that's tied to her face. Like, that is the most metal thing ever. <laughs> so I am pretty stoked to hear this one, especially if it's similar to Death Heaven. you heard anything off this one? Yeah, of Okay, course. I was gonna yeah. say. I just really like, I mean, Sabbath, I love doom metal, and this is kind of like what set the bar for doom metal for like decades. Just one of those that I really wanted to own. It's only $3.99, I guess because it's old, but like, dude, like, yeah, I'm gonna get that. This was literally the last thing I picked up after like, like 50 something dollars. And I was like, oh, I really can't get something else. I think I even put something back to get this. So just one of those that like I love in one of my shelf, yeah. <laughs> I like that one a lot because it's, I think their only metal album where it's bluesy as hell. It's their first album, so yeah. they were still trying to establish their sound. So it's like, not only did they pioneer metal virtually, but they incorporated blues elements to it. And I think that's so awesome. Okay, that's everything. Thank Yay. you, everybody, for being here. We're gonna take 
the the doggos <laughs> to Dolores <laughs> Park. Oh yay! And they're gonna have a good little time. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>